It's got yellow lights. It means it's good. Now, see, my voice uh, is never this deep. Uh, this is tired voice. This is, this is from, uh, uh, I live in North Carolina, and last night I had an engagement there. And um, it was just kind of the way the booking schedule worked out. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, I'm more than halfway drive last night, and then I got to finish the rest of it here this morning. And about 4.30 in the morning, uh, I was driving, and I, it was, you ever had those moments where you're just kind of zoned out, especially at that time in the morning, you're just kind of putting down the miles, and then all of a sudden your car makes this lunging move. Yeah, I thought I was out of gas. I was. <laughs> but I have a Honda. <laughs> so Hondas can run on fumes for about two miles. And uh, so luckily I was able to get uh, some gas and uh, I get to be here with you in this first service. Oh Holy Night is just my absolute favorite Christmas song. And uh, I had to start with that because I just think that encapsulates the whole Christmas spirit. And uh, I don't mean that in a cliche-ish way, um, but when I hear that song, especially Fall on Your Knees, that's when the Christmas chills come on, you know? And that's when you, if you haven't had that Christmas spirit, I guess, that's when it enters. And um, I hope that with our time together this morning, you're gonna feel God's presence, um, not just through the music, but also through the season that we're gonna be here together. And um, I've got a Christmas CD, and um, I'm excited to share with you a few highlights from that. Um, but I also want to share a testimony or two uh, with you about my life and my family. And uh, what I'd like to do is, is uh, let you know that my grandmother was uh, a tremendous influence on me uh, when it came to playing the piano. And she was the biggest fan of Liberace. She had all of his albums, she had his songbooks, and she was always talking about him. And she told my parents that Liberace was going to be on the Johnny Carson show. And at that time, I'd heard, heard her mention this guy a few times, but I really didn't grasp who he was. Well, now I was very interested in who he was, not so much for what he did, but for the fact that I was going to get to stay up on a school night and watch the Johnny Carson show. So I already liked this guy. And I remember watching him on TV. And I was trying to watch his fingers to see what he was doing, um, but I couldn't even see his fingers, not just because they were moving so fast, but because all of those rings that he had were covering up his fingers. And uh, one thing that he had was showmanship. And um, that's something that I like to bring uh, in my concerts and in my settings like this. I like to bring more than just sit and play the piano for you and then walk away. I want to be able to share my life. I want to share uh, my personality with you. And uh, that allows me to share the testimonies that go along with that. And um, so what I want to do is I want to play for you, uh, and this isn't necessarily a Christmas song, um, but I want to play for you something called My Southern Gospel Rag. And um, if you know Anthony Berger uh, for the Gaithers, uh, he's passed uh, a few years now, but he he was an amazing pianist, and I want to give you um, this version of the Southern Gospel Rag that I've put together. And my mom said that when she was pregnant for me, they would come into church on Sundays and to hear the prelude music. And the prelude music at our church, the whole function was to kind of wake you up, you know? And it's 8.15 service, you know, like this morning. Something a little upbeat, something to kind of be snappy. And uh, my mom said that as soon as the piano started playing, she said, I started kicking. She said that the faster and the louder the music got, the more I was kicking where she was getting uncomfortable. She said she looked down. It looked like there was an alien getting ready to come right out of her stomach. And it was me just going all over the place in there. But you know, it was a great testimony that God has a plan for your life. His word says that I knew you before you were even conceived. I know everything about you, and I know everything that I created you for. And I think that our struggle in this life is just trying to find what we created for. And if you start to focus on just loving him, you'll find that answer. So I want to give you 
the Southern Gospel Rag. And I uh, hope that you'll enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a little upbeat, but uh, I did take my shoes off, so we don't have to worry about anything else flying while I'm playing this song. And thank you all again for having me. Um, JT, I'm going to put this in and out of the mouth of the piano, so I'll let you mute it so that, yeah.
Now, if uh, the kids are close by, whenever I play uh, Carol of the Bells, I think of a blizzard because there's just so much activity in that song. And uh, so this kind of segues into uh, something special that I want to do uh, for the kids' sermon. So now I, I don't know how I officially kick this off, but I just invite the kids to come forward. Is that it? Okay. So uh, if you're not scared of me, come forward. <laughs> Oh, there are a couple coming down. Okay. I thought, oh gosh, that's going to come true. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> How are you doing? What's your name? Sam. Sam. Play piano? Yeah? Do you? Cool. Here, why don't you go ahead and sit right here? And uh, I want to just share something with you guys real quick. We're going to do something really cool. Who's the little guy coming up? Who are you? Owen. Hey, Owen. How are you, buddy? Hey, how are you guys? What's your name? Paco. Paco? All right. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Laura. Laura. Nice to meet you. Hi. What's your name? Faith. Faith. All right. Nice to meet you guys. Most books are perfect. You've got a pew just the right size for all y'all. Um, whenever um, there's that first snowfall, isn't that so exciting? And it's not just that it's so pretty, but you know there's a chance that you might get school canceled, right? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? But whenever you get a lot of snow and school gets canceled, what happens with all of that snow? It's just covered everything. And where everything just kind of looked a little bland, a little, you know, You've seen trees before, you've seen cars before, but once you put that blanket of white snow on top of it, all of a sudden it has a whole new look, doesn't it? And it looks kind of pretty, you know? And you know, that is the way that God covers our sin. It's not that pretty, it's kind of ordinary, but once that um, beautiful blanket of snow of God's forgiveness comes over your life, all of a sudden, what wasn't so pretty is now beautiful. And I just wanted to share that little uh, truth with you this morning. And we're going to capitalize on that because you know what I have with me this morning? I have a snow machine. I kid you not. There's no snow outside, but we're going to bring it inside. And it's right there. Doesn't that look like a cannon? That looks like it could blanket this whole auditorium, you know? And if we moved it around enough, it could. It could. So we're going to do a little contest, okay? Because I want one of you to run my snow machine for me on this next song, okay? So uh, I won't get into the details of running this machine. Let me just see if we could do a quick Q&A, okay? Um, there's a lot of keys on this piano, okay? And uh, I wanted to see if you could give me your best guess on how many keys you think there are on the piano. Do you want, what's your guess? 87, okay. How many do you think? 88? How about you, Owen? All right, good guess. How about you? 53, how about you? 73, you know how many's on the piano? 88, there are 88 keys on the piano. So was that you that guessed 88? And what was your name again? Parker. Paco, okay. Parker. Parker, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, my name's David, no, so. <laughs> what we're gonna do is, um, Parker, you're gonna run my snow machine this morning. And I'm telling you what, this is fun. And I'm gonna have you run it, and you know why? Because I'm gonna be busy playing the piano. I'm gonna play a little piano medley of Christmas songs, and you're gonna be over here putting as much snow into this sanctuary as possible, okay? Now, come here and take a look at this. Oh. Here's the remote control, okay? 
And why don't you go ahead and stand right here, turn around. I'm gonna move this over around you. Okay, now, see the cloud that's blowing? The, the higher up that is, the further out the snow's gonna shoot out of the snow machine. And then, you see this dial that has a snowflake on it? Well, if you put it down here on this side, you'll get a flurry. But if you put it over on this side, you get a blizzard. And you get, to, you get to decide if you like flurries or blizzards. We'll guess what we think we're gonna end up with. And to kick everything off, all you gotta do is you uh, hit that red button. So don't, don't, can you wait until I look at you? And when I look at you, you hit that button and you start cranking on these things and have a ball. All right, everybody give Parker a hand. If, if, you, if you're nervous, it's okay. And if you do this good, we're just gonna go around the country doing this for everybody, okay? <laughs> All right, sounds like a plan. All right, here we go. So what did you think? Is that cool? That's all right, huh? Do you know that people get paid to do that? Can you believe that? Would you like that? Something else I want to share with you guys real quick. Like I was saying earlier, God has a purpose for your life. And whatever you enjoy doing is probably your ministry. It's going to be what you get to do for other people. And you can do something like run a snow machine and still be able to minister to other people because you minister to all of us this morning. Thank you, Parker. Everybody give him a hand. Good job. Great job. Do you want to stay here and do this in the second service? No, okay. Okay, no problem. <laughs> 
that's a little overwhelming, I understand. Um, if it's not difficult, uh, JT, I should have given you more of a heads up. I pulled a picture of my family up on your desktop. Um, if we could put them up on the screen. I want to introduce my family to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is my uh, wife, April, and uh, my sons, uh, Joshua, Cole, Brendan, and Aaron. And um, my wife, April, and I will be married 20 years uh, this February. And uh, Joshua and Cole are the twins. They're 16. And then over there on my far left shoulder is my son, Brendan. He's 14. And then tucked there in the middle is our youngest, and he's, his name is Aaron. And uh, I'm going to share a quick testimony about Aaron. Um, but I want to let you know, I did bring some music with me this morning over here in your gathering area. I'll be more than happy to autograph a CD for you. Um, there's not as many as I should have, um, but things were uh, a little more involved last night than I expected, and, and, and so, so some CDs sold. But if we run out and you still want some music, I could take orders and have them left here at the church for you uh, maybe sometime Monday. So it's not like you'll have to go for very long without uh, getting some music if you want it. And since we're talking about CDs, um, if you happen to buy a CD, well, you're sewing into my ministry, but you're also helping to support the McClintock Child Food Relief Fund, which are those boys that I've got at home. <laughs> so I just want to thank you in advance for that donation. <laughs> but um, my son Aaron was born uh, premature at uh, 28 weeks. Uh, my wife was suffering from a condition known as placenta previa, which aggravates the pregnancy. And um, it was on a Christmas Eve night. Then I got a phone call at 1.30, and the hospital said, you need to come. Uh, we think that we're not going to be able to stop the progression of this delivery. And so I raced to the hospital, and by the time I got there, things had calmed down, and everything looked like it was going to be okay. And the doctors had left the room, and I was just sitting there talking with my wife, April, and all of a sudden, um, she just let out this terrible scream of pain. And um, I knew it was not good. And I jumped up real quick and I started to run toward the door. And I remember hearing alarms and uh, alerts and warning signals and, you know, flashing lights and stuff. Because they had all this equi equipment hooked up to her to monitor Aaron and to monitor her. And um, when I jumped up to go get to the door, before I even reached the door handle, the doctors and nurses came busting into that room. And the, uh, uh, they, they, they pulled cords uh, out of the wall. And I saw them, I mean, these were these big heavy cords, you know, that are like four inches thick and just a lot of wires. And I remember them taking it and, and they were heaving these big wires up on the bed. And that's when I noticed um, what was really happening. And, um, because of her blood loss that was coming off of the bed. And I looked at her and that was when I saw her face just turn white and the, the color drained from her lips and she passed out right there in the room. She told me that during that time, she said she felt her spirit come out of her body. She said she was floating above everything that was going on. And she was able to tell the doctors and nurses exactly what was going on before they even wheeled her out of that room. But she said she was above it. And she said that the, the doctor said that when they got her down to the emergency delivery, um, there was only a couple of minutes that were to spare. <coughs> Excuse me. Where they were gonna be able to resupply her with blood and safely deliver Aaron. And um, that ended up being what God has given us as a testimony during this time of the year. And we're really thankful for the outcome that we had. But in the same sense, just two years ago, I lost my dad at Thanksgiving. So sometimes this is a beautiful time of the year. Sometimes this is a very difficult time of the year. Some of us has, have an outcome where our little ones are saved and we bring them home. And sometimes there's another outcome and you have to say goodbye. But the beauty of it is, if you're one of God's children, you don't have to say goodbye forever. You'll get to see that loved one again, and you're going to have a Christmas 
that will last for all eternity. So I want to leave you with that, uh, that, that nugget of hope and of encouragement for this time of the year. And uh, thanks for letting me share our testimony. I wrote a song all about what happened with Aaron. It's called Angel Flood. And I actually have video of right after he was born. And they allowed me to follow him up with my video camera, just our own family video camera. And I got to see what these doctors and nurses were doing to save his life. So it's very dramatic. And my wife gets to hold Aaron for the first time at the end of this clip. And uh, if we can go ahead and get that started. And um, my wife didn't get to hold him for three days because she was just completely incapacitated. She was sick and uh, she felt so bad. And um, this is going to be the song Angel Flood, where I felt like God had sent a flood of angels um, to protect Aaron and to protect my wife April during the time that I had no control whatsoever. All of that trust, everything, you can go ahead and roll it. All of that trust and all of that was put in God's hands. And sometimes we want to have control, but in the end, we have no control. It's all in his hands. And um, because of the video quality so poor, we never intended on sharing this with the world. But um, as God has called us and we prayed about it, this is what we feel led to do. And um, so while you watch this, if we could bring, um, go ahead and cut that. Um, Thank you, that sound, because I'm going to play that live. Um, If we could bring the lights off, that would be great. And uh, I look forward to meeting you after uh, this next song.
Go ahead and bring the lights up if you would. David, thank you for being here today and sharing your message with us this morning very, very much and music. Um, that ends the service. <laughs> but before you leave, uh, today was about just kind of sitting in the presence and in the family of God here this morning at, at Carlisle. And I hope whatever uh, you were feeling or thinking uh, just adds to your experience uh, of this Christmas season that, that we all find ourselves in. So let's bow our heads for a closing prayer. God, thank you so much for who you are. And thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, and all that means to us. Help us to carve out those moments that we might reflect on the miracle that is birth, the birth of your son and the difference that it's made in our lives. So may our celebrations this year be filled with that remembrance and reflection that we might have one of the more meaningful experiences of Christmas we've ever had. Thank you for your presence here among us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here. Please join in the gathering and enjoy fellowship with one another in this day.